uh, you know, I'm an accountant. I was so excited. I thought I was going to get 15 minutes of fame. John tells me it's seven minutes of wisdom. So, so the accountant's wisdom, typically, you know, you think it's about numbers. What it's really about is categories and, and terms. And so uh, what I'm going to do today is introduce you to some new categories of behavior that may or may not be unethical. Uh, and the first key term is measure management. You can also think of this talk as updating Campbell's Law. Uh, so here's a paraphrased version of a law spelled out uh, many decades ago by the father of modern social science, uh, Donald T. Campbell. Basically says if you hold people accountable, uh, reward and punish them, for uh, some measure of performance, what they're going to do is they're going to manage the measure rather than managing just the performance the measure is supposed to capture. And this is the definition of measure management. Um, actually, wait, before we get into that, I just want to point out that, uh, you know, this is really it poses a pretty bleak trade-off for us. You can either hold people accountable or you can have them gaming the system in potentially harmful ways. Uh, so uh, I'm going to try to give you a sense of uh, the categories of measure management and how we might deal with the problem. A uh, couple examples first, you know, high stakes testing uh, is, is a very popular application of Campbell's Law. So, uh, you know, the state of Georgia evaluates and rewards and punishes teachers based on how well their students do on the state test. So what do students, or what do teachers do? Well, they might actually go in and change students' answers to the tests, uh, or they might teach to the test. If it's not on the test, we ain't teaching it, and if it is on the test, well, we're not going to help the students learn. We're going to give them tricks to do better on the test. Uh, there, now it's very popular to have public ratings of hospitals. So what do hospitals do? Well, you know, they generate a lot of the reports that are the input to the ratings. So if there's a serious complication, uh, they call it moderate. And if it's moderate, they call it mild. Or they simply turn away, uh, uh, you know, people who are high risk of complication. So. The, in each of these cases, uh, I've given two versions of measure management. The first one is what I call reporting distortion. It's where you change how you report what actually happened. You, you lie, you deceive. This is the bulk of compliance issues. I think a lot of what I've heard here today is about reporting distortions, misreporting what actually happened. It's widely discussed, widely viewed as seriously unethical, and it's very harshly punished. You know what? Those teachers uh, in Atlanta actually did change answers to the test. They got 20 years in jail. So uh, whereas teaching to the test, you know, principals encourage that. Uh, and, and this is puzzling because the other form, like teaching to the test or turning away high-risk patients, that causes very direct harm to me. My, my intuition is that that's pretty unethical. Both of those uh, are unethical because they cause harm. But in fact, uh, some large national surveys that I've conducted with some colleagues suggest that's not how people feel. Uh, people don't see these as serious ethical problems. They uh, engage in them, and part of the issue is no one even thinks of operational distortion, distorting the operations away from, uh, you know, and, and actually harming uh, true performance uh, just to make the measures look good. Uh, people don't even think of that as a category of unethical behavior, and they don't have uh, such a problem with it. So, uh, so what can we do about it? And, you know, it turns out this is a world of trade-offs. Uh, because Campbell is basically right. The more you ramp up those incentives, the more you're going to get measure management. So it, we're in a world of compromise when we design our uh, ethical systems. So right, we can limit accountability 
Okay, and that will reduce measure management, but then we also reduce motivation and control. We can pay money to the accountants, thank you very much, uh, <laughs> build a much better reporting system that it's going to make it harder to create a gap between uh, what we actually care about, you know, what counts, and what's getting counted. <laughs> we can actually conceal our measurement system. You know, if you use like secret shoppers, if you use after the fact subjective performance evaluation, uh, that's really hard to gain. Um, and uh, but but then that also comes at a cost, which is people don't really know what is being asked of them. Finally, we can limit discretion because reporting discretion arises when people have discretion over how they report what happened. Operational discretion or operational distortion arises when people have uh, discretion over operations like what the curriculum is or what patients uh, they're actually going to take on in their hospitals. But again, all right, we can reduce measure management, have more ethical behavior, but that's a, a high cost of uh, a loss of autonomy of our workers, a loss of agility that would allow them to use their judgment based on uh, what is going on at the time that they may know and we don't. So uh, that's all I have time for. If you're interested in more, I actually have a book that I use to teach executive uh, MBA students at Cornell. It's called What Counts and What Gets Counted. Uh, free online, just search Bloomfield and SSRN. Uh, I have another one uh, that's more recent. Uh, if you're academic, you probably uh, recommend this to your junior colleagues. It's how to be a good professor, not a successful one, uh, necessarily, but a good one. Thank you.